Let's pray about it. This is an afternoon by now. Um, as part of the health care reform law that I signed last year, all insurance plans are required to cover preventive care at no cost. That means free checkups, free mammograms, immunizations, and other basic services. We fought for this because it saves lives and it saves money for families, for businesses, for government, for everybody. And that's because it's a lot cheaper to prevent an illness than to treat one. We also accepted a recommendation from the experts at the Institute of Medicine that when it comes to women, preventive care should include coverage of contraceptive services such as birth control. In addition to family planning, doctors often prescribe contraception as a way to reduce the risks of ovarian and other cancers and treat a variety of different ailments. And we know that the overall cost of health care is lower when women have access to contraceptive services. Nearly 99% of all women have relied on contraception at some point in their lives. 99%. And yet more than half of all women between the ages of 18 and 34 have struggled to afford it. So for all these reasons, we decided to follow the judgment of the nation's leading medical experts and make sure that free preventive care includes access to free contraceptive care. Whether you're a teacher, or a small businesswoman, or a nurse, or a janitor, no woman's health should depend on who she is, or where she works, or how much money she makes. Every woman should be in control of the decisions that affect her own health, period. And this basic principle is already the law in 28 states across the country. Now, as we move to implement this rule, however, we've been mindful that there is another principle at stake here, and that's the principle of religious liberty, an inalienable right that's enshrined in our Constitution. As a citizen and as a Christian, I cherish this right. In fact, my first job in Chicago was working with Catholic parishes in poor neighborhoods, and my salary was funded by a grant from an arm of the Catholic Church. And I saw that local churches often did more good for a community than a government program ever could. And so I know how important the work that faith-based organizations uh, do and how much impact they can have in their communities. I also know that some religious institutions, particularly those affiliated with the Catholic Church, have a religious objection to directly providing insurance that covers contraceptive services for their employees. And that's why we originally exempted all churches from this requirement. An exemption, by the way, that eight states didn't already have. And that's why, from the very beginning of this process, I spoke directly to various Catholic officials. And I promised that before finalizing the rule as it applied to them, we would spend the next year working with institutions like Catholic hospitals and Catholic universities to find an equitable solution that protects religious liberty and ensures that every woman has access to the care that she needs. Now, after the many genuine concerns that have been raised over the last few weeks, as well as, frankly, the more cynical desire on the part of some to make this into a political football, it became clear that spending months hammering out a solution uh, was not going to be an option, that we needed to move this faster. So last week, I directed the Department of Health and Human Services to speed up the process that had already been envisioned. We weren't going to spend a year doing this. We we're going to spend a week or two doing this. And today, we've reached a decision on how to move forward. Under the rule, women will still have access to free preventive care that includes contraceptive services, no matter where they work. So that core principle remains. But if a woman's employer is a charity or a hospital that has a religious objection to providing contraceptive services as part of their health plan, the insurance company, not the hospital, not the charity, 
will be required to reach out and offer the woman contraceptive care free of charge, without copays and without hassles. The result will be that religious organizations won't have to pay for these services, and no religious institution will have to provide these services directly. Let me repeat, these employers will not have to pay for or provide contraceptive services. But women who work at these institutions will have access to free contraceptive services, just like other women. And they'll no longer have to pay hundreds of dollars a year that could go towards paying the rent or buying groceries. Now, I've been confident from the start that we could work out a sensible approach here, just as I promised. I understand some folks in Washington may want to treat this as another political wedge issue, but it shouldn't be. I certainly never saw it that way. This is an issue where people of goodwill on both sides of the debate have been sorted through some very complicated questions to find a solution that works for everyone. With today's announcement, we've done that. Religious liberty will be protected, and a law that requires free preventive care will not discriminate against women. And we live in a pluralist, uh, pluralistic society where we're not going to agree on every single issue or share every belief. That doesn't mean that we have to choose between individual liberty and basic fairness for all Americans. We are unique among nations for having been founded upon both these principles. And our obligation as citizens is to carry them forward. Uh, I have complete faith that we can do that. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, so ya vieron el, el... <laughs> los aplausos no es necesario, muchas gracias. <laughs> okay, ahora, verdad, ya vimos el video, podemos prender las luces, gracias. Eh, ya, ya vimos el video. Ahora solo quiero que tengan en mente, nosotros aquí como iglesia, como personas, como grupo, no estamos ni con ni contra ningún partido político. We are not for and we are not against any political parties. What we are against is the issue of providing contraceptives to women that and affecting our moral our moral conscience, okay? So what we are against is the issue. Not any political party. Okay? Nosotros no estamos ni a favor ni contra ningún partido político. Solo quiero que tengan eso en mente. Okay? Ahora, Giovanna Romero nos va a hablar un poco de cómo esto nos afecta globalmente, mundialmente. Okay? O culturalmente. So, before we move further, I wanted just to give an, an overview of the size of the church and the impact that it has here in the United States. Um, the church, it has for over 41,000 priests, 30,000 lay ministries, 80% of them comprised of women. And look at the number of religious sisters, religious brothers, seminarians. So it's a pretty big church, right? Uh, the church as an employer employs more than 1 million employees. La iglesia emplea más de un millón de empleados en este país. The church is operating budget nearly of 100 billion to run parishes, schools, nursing homes, retreat centers, hospitals, and Catholic schools educate over 2.7 million students and employ 150,000 teachers. This is a lot of people that the church employs. And what are these people doing? They're serving Americans. They're serving people that live here, people that need it, not only Catholics, but non-Catholics, people who are in need. This is what the church does. So, la iglesia emplea más de un millón de personas. Y todas esas personas están ahí, no solamente sirviendo a católicos, sino a todo el mundo que lo necesite, en hospitales, en escuelas, en, en muchos lugares de caridades, a quien sea, la iglesia es universal y nuestro deseo es de servirle a todos. Catholic Healthcare Systems is comprised of 625 hospitals. It's the largest non-profit system in the United States. Este es el, 
el, la, el grupo del de, sistema de sin fin de lucro más grande de este país. The cost of run, and running these hospitals is 84.6 billion, including 5.7 billion that the, the hospitals donate. Part of this is employment, and part of that, of course, is insurance for the, its, its employees. So, on average, every hospital, every Catholic hospital admits one in six patients every day nationwide. So there's a lot of people that are receiving services, no matter what they believe, no matter their employment status, no matter their immigration status, the, the Catholic Church serves everyone. So all of these organizations, once again, are open for anyone who needs assistance. Estas organizaciones están abiertas para todos los que necesiten asistencia. So since they do not pri uh, serve primarily persons of their own faith, or they are not all the time teaching doctrine that is religious, they're not exempt from this mandate. Porque nos, nuestras organizaciones, las caridades, los hospitales, sirven a personas que no son primariamente católicas y no se están dedicando a enseñar la doctrina todo el tiempo, no están exentas de este mandato. So we're talking about all these organizations that are providing services for anyone will have to obey this mandate. If they refuse to provide such coverage, they will be required to pay very large fines. So what does this mean? Small organizations will have to, perhaps cannot afford this, and they choose, and may, may, maybe they will have to close. Esto puede significar que muchas personas de estas organizaciones pequeñas que no puedan pagar esas eh, multas por no proveer este tipo de, de cobertura médica, van a tener que cerrar porque no van a poder eh, eh, alcanzar a pagar todas esas eh, multas. multas. Claro. So, just as an example, I received this on an email and I thought it was very, uh, it's crazy that it's happening. So, for example, and we have them here. The Sisters of Life, who are neither employers or employees of our, of our religious institution, will now also be for, forced to provide a coverage, uh, to pay for insurance that includes these quote-unquote services. Be and or if they don't want to do that, then they'll have to pay for services out of pocket. This is just an example. That means all of us who perhaps don't work directly for a church will have to pay for, uh, for coverage that includes these services. O sea, eso quiere decir que todos los que no estamos trabajando directamente para una iglesia vamos a tener que pagar por eh, co cobertura de salud que incluya estos servicios. So, just as a, as a show of hands, who here works for an organization outside of the church? Raise your hand. Outside of the church. Okay. Who here has health insurance who is not covered by, is paid by the state? Perhaps somebody here that wants to have a job in the future that will cover for the health insurance? Raise your hand. That means all of us here that raise your hands will have to pay as part of our payment to the insurance for somebody to receive these contraceptive services. Do you understand? This is crazy. This means all of this money that is going to go into the abortion industry coming out of our hardly earned dollars. So, once again, that means that our dollars are going to have to pay for this. So, this is the other issue, that ab abortion on demand, for example, the day after pill, which is considered one of the contraceptives that is accepted by the FDA, will have to be covered by this. So, this is considered now basic health care. This is what the government is telling us, that this is supposed to be health care. So, since the insurance companies will have to provide this for everybody, regardless of their, their beliefs, they're going to have to get the money out of somewhere, somewhere, right? So that means that all of those higher costs that the insurance companies are going to incur are going to come out of everybody that's paying insurance. So even when they're saying that the Catholic Church directly is not going to have to pay for these services, they are paying for coverage for their employees, and these companies got to get the money out of somewhere. 
So they're still indirectly covering for this abortion services and for this quote unquote preventive services, providing birth control pills, providing day after, providing all the shots, the, all these things that we know and we strongly are against this. This is, but beyond a, a pro-life issue, because this is definitely a provide issue, a pro-life issue, this is also even bigger than that, because that means that they're telling us that regardless of what we believe, we have to do what they're saying. We have to violate our conscience. So this is creating a, a legislative precedent. What does that mean? Before, since the 70s, many federal laws exempted individual institutions from having to take care, take part in this, uh, provide this, these health services. Antes de este mandato, muchas leyes federales y estatales prevenían a las personas que por sus convicciones religiosas o morales tuvieran que pagar por esos servicios. Now, what's happening now? The, um, the government is violating this fe long-standing federal tradition. So what happens is that they're creating a precedent that means that from now on, they could dictate upon our beliefs. So what, what does this mean next? What's gonna happen next? What else are they gonna force us to do? It's like one of the, the speeches, one of the bishops were saying is he was using the, the um, um, comparison to a kosher deli and the government telling the kosher deli that all of a sudden they have to sell pork. <laughs> That's unthinkable. This is not American. This is not what we stand for. So what's next? What else are they going to dictate over how our beliefs? If we let this happen, what, we, what is the next thing? This is already setting a precedent that from now on, if it was done before, it could be done again. And this is why it's critical that we stand together and that we raise our voices and we let our government know that no, we are going to stand by our beliefs. We are going to stand by our religious freedom. We're going to stand by our freedom of, of conscience because it matters to us. It matters to us. This is why it's everybody's business here. Okay? So, um, are we going to take questions at the end? Okay, we're going to get some questions at the end. So, um, thank you. Ahora, eh, es muy importante que mantengan la pregunta que van a tener en mente, porque al final le vamos a dar la oportunidad de dar sus comentarios y alguna pregunta que tengan. Um, it's very important that you keep your questions in mind, because at the end we will give you the opportunity to speak briefly about your comments or maybe any questions that you might be having. Uh, now, Lewis will give you a uh, perspective on how this is going to affect us in a micro level. When we say micro level, we mean each and every one of you as individuals. Ahora Luis va a hablar de cómo esto nos va a afectar individualmente, como persona. Bueno, Giovanna como que me robó la mitad de mi talk. <laughs> Pero yo todavía tengo un chin que le quiero decir, que quiero compartir con ustedes. Well, Giovanna already said half of my talk. If you guys are paying attention, she covered some of uh, the things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, so I'm just gonna try to be quick, try to tell you guys a little bit something. So one of the things that I really want to emphasize how this is gonna affect us is because a lot of people are gonna be saying, well, isn't that good? The government is gonna be providing free birth control for American women. And um, the answer to this is that that's false. That whole claim is false. One that coverage will be mandatory, and it's not going to be a matter of free choice for any woman. And secondly, the insurance companies will not be able to charge a copay or a deductible for the coverage. So they'll simply add the cost to the standard premium of everyone that everyone has to pay, and that includes us. So at the end of the day, even people that um, go against this belief because of their uh, freedom, because of their be religious beliefs or their beliefs and conscience, they'll still have to pay for this. So, aquí viene el problema. Muchas personas están diciendo en nuestro gobierno ahora mismo, y gente como nosotros, católicas, que eso es una buena idea, porque ahora toda mujer tiene acceso a esos beneficios médicos, incluyendo um, esas drogas abortivas. Eso sería algo excelente. Pero en realidad es que eso es falso. Eso es falso, Porque si no podemos a pensar, um, el dinero va a venir de nuestro bolsillo. 
¿Y qué pasa si tú no crees que esto es correcto? ¿Qué pasa si tú no crees que esas drogas se le deben dar a la mujer? Al final del cuenta, si este mandato llega a pasar, el gobierno te va a cobrar a ti para que tú le pagues a otra mujer a hacer algo que va contra tu moral, tu conciencia y tu religión. So, esto va más allá de un problema de aborto, sino es un problema porque va en contra de lo que nosotros creemos como persona religiosa, como persona que tiene conciencia. And the only solution for this problem is for um, the mandate not to be passed and for things to remain how they are. And how it is right now is that if something goes against your freedom of conscience or your freedom of uh, religion, you have a chance to get your own way of paying for it. And that's what the church has been doing. But under the mandate, if the mandate gets passed, all, all, the, church, all the way the church pays for all of these things is going to have to be eradicated. And we're going to have to start paying through um, the methods that the, the mandate agrees upon which means that all the insurances that the church used to have are going to go goodbye, and then these new insurances that add all of this um, contraceptive prevention care must be included in the provisions, or else the church will be fine. So, ¿qué pasa? Si antes usted tenía un seguro de plan um, que hacía todo eso, que respetaba su, sus creencias religiosas o su um, conciencia moral, ahora, si el mandato pasa, va a tener que buscar otro modo de pagar porque el modo tiene que ser siguiendo lo que nos enseña el mandato so ahora si el mandato pasa vamos a tener que incluir esas drogas abortivas y nosotros mismos vamos a hacer lo que la vamos a pagar y eso nos afecta por el dinero y, lo que, y el problema es que no es solamente las instituciones religiosas que están en contra de eso el gobierno completo, um, muchas, muchas personas del gobierno tampoco están de acuerdo. Estados ya han um, demandado al gobierno. Uh, uh, states have already sued the government. Private schools have already sued the government. Television networks have already sued the government because this doesn't benefit them. This doesn't benefit people with conscience and with uh, freedom of religion. Um, y es un problema bien grande. Y como personas que estamos dentro de la iglesia, y como cristianos, y como buenos ciudadanos que somos, tenemos que levantarnos y no debemos dejar que esto pase. One-fourth of the United States is Catholic. One-fourth. So if we all stand up for what we believe in and we say no to the government, that this goes against what we believe in and we're not going to follow it by not voting for people that legislate in this manner, our voices will be heard. Because what's been going on is that the church has been a little bit isolated. And it's almost like if we've gone incognito. So what we have to do is speak through the government. Speak through our vote so that our voices as Christians can be heard. So that our voices as men and women with that freedom of religion and with our own consciousness can be heard all the way through Washington. We cannot let a government dictate upon us what to do. No debemos dejar que el gobierno nos dicte qué debemos hacer y cómo debemos vivir nuestras vidas en aspectos de religión y de libertad de conciencia. Tenemos que pararnos como católicos, como americanos que somos, como ciudadanos que somos y dejar que nuestras voces se escuchen. Y la única manera que esto va a pasar es si le hablamos a los legisladores que no acepten este mandato. So the only way that this is going to happen is if we speak to our legislators and we tell them that we do not want this mandate. And that the only way that that's going to change is if the mandate doesn't happen and if we vote for the new Respect for Rights of Conscience Act that's trying to be passed right now in the government. So speak to your legislators, speak to your representatives, and tell them that you want the Respect for the Rights of Conscious Act to be passed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Gracias, Luis. Gracias. Okay, so it's not that bonito. Bueno, thank you. Okay. Okay.